the second episode of the Super Freak Media Podcast, No Ghouls Allowed. I'm joined again by Liam Banks, Richard Parker and Charlie Clark, and I'm your host, John O'Butler. So, this week, have we seen anything cool? That's my question. I just like the silence there, so you could literally, literally be in a room on your own. Nothing, <laughs> no on my own. <laughs> Nobody's seen anything good. No. See you next time. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Stay creepy. <laughs> Richard, time. seen anything cool? Uh, I'm going to throw it out there a little bit different. Twist your uh, twist, twist your question a little bit. Question. A little bit twist waste. your little question, twist your question a little bit. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to go with listen to. Um, I've spent the last 20 something hours now um, listening to The Stand by Stephen King. Maybe not the last 20 hours straight, that sounds weird when you put it like that. But I have spent approximately 20 hours. <laughs> Can we start again? <laughs> no, you, you've no, done, you've done well there. No, alright, we're sticking attempt. with this. I've been listening to The Stand by Stephen King and I haven't finished it. I'm only about halfway through and it's pretty good. Sounds good. How many pages is it? In, like, book form. Not a clue. 800 and something. So you're on 400 and something yes, pages. Yes, I guess. In your book on tape. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. not tape, because, because we're not all ancient, like you. <laughs> <laughs> Caught but it's a weird but it's, loop. But, it's, but, it's, but you're enjoying it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Sweet. Can, you, can you give us a, a brief synopsis? Uh, without so giving too much away, especially considering... Well, I suppose I could speculate. It's, it's not one that I'm familiar with, to um, like King book. Basic is premise. recent King book, or is it an, an old one? Uh... I think eighties. I, th- yeah, I yeah. think the version I'm listening to is like a, is a like a almost like an author's edit. Oh, is it? So is it thing. like an old recording as well? Uh, no, no, it's modern recording. What What are you listening to it through? Uh, Audible gramophone. Oh. Yeah, I got, no, not <laughs> so, all your. So glad you're here, John. Um, <laughs> basic basic premise for you though is kind of uh, government experimenty stuffs. Ah, uh, okay. Um, they kind of create this. Uh, illness that escapes very early on pretty much everybody's dead and it's about the same people and kind of their experiences and there's a little bit of like a, an underlying sort of I'm not sure if it's supernatural or what kind of thing to it as I haven't finished it yet but it's pretty damn good cool yeah, sounds, sounds sweet you have to keep us up to date when you finished it I will do and I'll try not to spoil it so have you read a lot of Stephen King or is this like your first uh, to- so this is like my, my first foray into one of his longer um, ones I haven't really read any of them I've, I've listened to quite a few of them now um, so you know I've, I've done things like Green Mile um, The Shining and uh, Mr Mercedes was particularly good as well I've got a really cool book um, of like a lot of the short stories that have been adapted into film. So uh, Shawshank was one, I believe. Shawshank, fourteen oh eight, and there that fourteen oh eight is a really is cool story. Is it the one story. with the mess? Is it Skeleton Crow? Is it that one? E- that's, no, that's I, I think I think Nevada, I think I've got that. Yeah, but I think good. the book is literally called Stephen King Goes to the Movies. So it's like oh a, wow, okay. it's a new Ooh. kind oh, of that sounds interesting. Ooh, that's put cool. together version. He's such a good writer, though, isn't he? he yeah. yeah, he really is. He's yeah. He's, he's lasted for years as well like he's still he's still going I, I think, think for a, he, wrote, he wrote under a pseudonym for a little while as well um, someone was telling me just I don't know whether that was to prove that he doesn't need his name as Stephen King to sell novels well I know yeah. his son does that doesn't he because he's Joe Hill is it yeah because obviously if he had King attached everyone would be like yeah, you're, you're selling books based on your yeah. dad's name. Mm. So I think of, that's quite admirable. Sort of like Nicholas Cage, Cage. Nicholas Cage. So there's, 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 there's the theme it. for this podcast. None of us can speak. None apparently. of us can talk. Everyone take a shot every time we don't say the word. Oh, right. yes. <laughs> everyone's already. Every, everyone's yeah. already. But yeah, Nick, um, my boy Nick, he changed his name, didn't he, uh, from Coppola to Cage, not to oh. be associated with his family. Yeah. So that you could go off on his own. Liam, are you looking at me like this is a revelation? It, it is for me. You I fully blow my mind. So he, he's related to Francis Ford yeah, Coppola? Yeah, 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 it's part of the same no. family. No. Yeah, 100%. Don't. Yeah. What? Insert explosion sound. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie just scatters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> what? Yeah, so he changed his name so that he would... Uh, why do People I have more respect for him now? I have a lot more respect also, for him. Also, he changed it to Cage, which is cool as balls. But it makes sense, because he's kind of constantly a caged beast, isn't he? You say mm. you have more respect for him. Like, is it possible to have any more respect for that man? I don't know. He, he is incredible. Can I right. just segue a little bit and just give you one story that I heard about Nicolas Cage recently? 
yeah, play go for it. Only the go one. Only the one. <laughs> only the one. I'll <laughs> give you a new one every I week. I think every week, yeah. Every you, month. You should have. We call it Cage Corner. We have like a Cage Corner. Jingo. Cage Corner. Cage Corner. Cage Corner. We need like a little. This is it. Cage Corner number one. Um, Nicholas Cage once owned two Cobras because he thought Cobras were cool. Uh, <laughs> End of story. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I, I was, I've been watching Nicholas Cage interviews recently and it's like, it, the, the guy is fascinating. I genuinely think he's like the best actor of his generation. I don't think that's, that's not me being an arse. I think he's that good, right? Seriously, <laughs> no, he no is. It's good that we're talking about seriously. award shows today. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar winner Nicholas yeah. Cage. Um, <laughs> but... He, he decided that he, he was like, I want cobras. You know, cobras are awesome. So he had a, a room built in his in his house with, like, glass fronts and everything, a glass door. And what he would do was he would get home from shooting or wherever he was during the day and he would sit in the room in his big armchair. He'd make sure he'd take in, like, a shot of anti-venom in case that they got him. No. Right? And he would sit in the room with, like, I think it was red wine, he said. And he would just sit in the room and watch him go around, getting angrier and angrier, until, in his words, they told him to <laughs> off. And then he would, <laughs> yeah, he would just drugs, leave. Me. <laughs> and then just close the door and go, oh, yeah, I should probably go now. But I think that he's... What a guy. He's, he's, so many he's a strange man, but he's excellent. The man bought a castle. Like, well, he, he you got, can't argue with that. Um, Madame Lalaurie's place, didn't he? In um, New Orleans, he own it Louisiana. Though, yeah, he. That's that. Don't take my cage facts. I'm so that's going to be a cage fact for but next time. He's like a myth, isn't he? Corner. He's he's like literally a living. <laughs> the legend. fable of Nicholas. Cage. He is one of those people that like nothing actually surprises me anymore. When you go, yeah, he did this. You're like, oh, yeah, sounds well, like a cage. Yeah, but if, any, if you said anybody <coughs> else did it, you'd be like, no, they didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicholas yeah, Cage, kind of a believer. But I. I one hundred percent that Nicolas Cage will be a topic in one of the podcasts where I try and defend Nicolas Cage as being the best actor of his generation. I, th- I think that's yeah. something we all bring something to the table, and we have to sell it to everybody else and the listeners that it is gospel, and that is mine. Okay, okay. so it, that's that's one for the I mean, future. I was, I was sold just, will just from watching Mum and Dad. I was sold just listening to him. Singing the hokey cokey and smashing the shit out of that pool table. Yeah. That's enough for me. Legend. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Legend. Absolutely. Excellent. So, Liam, seen anything cool? Yes. Um, I've just recently caught Escape Room uh, at the cinema. It, I think it's just recent, well, at the time of as, as recording this, it had quite a limited release here in the UK. Just to clarify, it's not the Escape Room that's on Netflix. No, no, no I think there's film. about three films that have the title Escape Room. It is, it, it, I think it's the only one that's been released this year. Um, I can't for the life of me really remember the names, director's name. But I know that he did Insidious, The Last Key, It's and Taking of Deborah Logan, it's that guy. Oh, OK. Um, so I... I absolutely loved it. Um, unfortunately, like with a lot of the horror films I've seen recently, right up until like the last ten minutes, I was really invested in it. Um, I actually went to go see it with with Charlie, um, and it was it, it it was really really great in terms of concept, mm. the ideas that it had there, um, and it obviously it was you, like a less gory saw in some ways, wasn't it? it yeah, I mean it is, but I think. It was it was cleverer, cleverer. <laughs> in, yeah, and its approach with things. Plus, it had some really interesting visuals to it, which obviously I always appreciate. Um, but you really cared about the characters. I think that's what was refreshing about it. Like, yeah. every character brought something to the table, and when obviously various things are taking place and things happen, it you care about them. Um, and it's, I, I think the problem that I had is it, not spoiling it, but is the fact that it very blatantly had a couple of endings and it was trying to set itself up yeah. for a sequel. And I think it has franchise potential, definitely, but it's it was it it tried was a bit too, too hard at the end. It was too much of an obvious setup for a sequel, wasn't it? It's like, yeah. we're going to make another one! Like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you should definitely check it out. It's 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 really, really quite cool. Um, I particularly like the 8-ball-themed uh, room that, that comes like in. Like the bar. Like the, yeah, the pool table. Mm-hmm. Theme dream. It's good, pretty cool. Mm. It's a good scene. There good was scene. there was a couple of bits at that point where I think we were like, <gasps> like we really. Mm. Th- there's good moments. Like it gets quite tense. In places, yeah, and not it? straight up horror either. Okay, but um, <coughs> it has has its moments, which is good. Mm. Sounds good to me, Charlie. 
Um, mine's a one that I'm very, very late to the party on, but I don't care because um, I'm loving it at the moment. Is Luther? Like I didn't watch Luther when it was originally on mm. TV, and then around Christmas and New Year's there was the series. I think it was five. Mm-hmm. Someone's probably screaming with I Hermione think, Norris. So yes, yeah. so the latest one. Yeah, yeah. So that obviously came out, and everybody like mm. my social media went mental, and I was like, I need to watch this, but I didn't just want to watch series five. Yeah, see, I did that. Yeah, you did that, but I I went back and because it's all on Netflix, I went back and watched it from the first episode and. Within the first five minutes, I was sold. Mm. Like, and I've not, I've not kind of felt this way about like a TV series since I think I started watching American Horror Story, like the first series of American mm. Horror Story. Like, there's, a, I think it was the second episode where I was sat watching it, and you realise something's going to happen as John Luther realises it's about to happen and you kind of have the same level of panic as it, and it's all of a sudden you just go, oh no, oh my god, no. And then mm-hmm. it's too late. And I th- it's such clever story writing, it's great script writing, it's great characters and yeah, I think I'm on season three. It's one of those I've got to catch up on because I watched the first three seasons mm-hmm. um, and then I haven't watched any since. So I've got a lot well, of catching up to do on that. Got to a bit which I don't want to spoil um, I don't know how I can say without spoiling it but there's something happens that you do, you don't think the writers would do that I think yeah it takes some bold, bold yeah, turns and there it? was, there was a good. moment where something <laughs> happens to a character and I just went I can't believe they've just done that. I genuinely can't believe they've just done that. Like that's got to be. That's got to be. I think also Idris Elba is just like amazing, Idris Elba is everything. He is fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, like he he, he makes. I think if anybody else had been John, I don't think it would have been as successful as it is. It's one of those things, isn't it? Like you, you can't <coughs> see anybody else. Yeah, like, yeah, he he is that 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 yeah, one hundred percent. And I, I think he's only sort of more recently starting to get the recognition he deserves. I don't know if you guys mm. have seen um, Beasts of No Nation no, on I Netflix. Mm. He is amazing in that he plays um, like a, a warlord who has child soldiers, oh, and wonderful. it's very powerful, very hard hitting, and mm. it's, he's fantastic in it. I just I think he's got like such a an incredible range as an actor. Yeah. Um, but that, and I think he's ve- he's very good. Like obviously he's in like the Thor films mm-hmm. as well, and he's like <laughs> I didn't realize when I watched Thor and then watched Luther. Like it, there was a bit of a disconnect. Like I didn't twig mm. that it was the same person. That series, so though, I think, is I really think that special speaks. in the way that that treads the fine line between real life and horror, though. Oh, because some the horror yeah. is obviously yeah. in the crimes and things that mm. are being committed and what we're seeing. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally have only seen season five, and that, that was straight up like it had kind of references to like Jalo and stuff with the like, mask killer and, and all things like that, which was really cool. But um, I know from what you've kind of told me, it seems quite twisted. Oh, it is. Yeah, oh, yeah there's, there's like a good... Because it's set in London, and I've spent quite a lot of time in London, and there's parts of where they film stuff that I mm. recognise. So I've, like, I've walked down that street, and, like, if that was real and that... Per- but yeah, it really... It's stuff that sits in your mind. Mm. And I think if I went back to those places yeah. and walked... It would... Especially at night, it would probably trigger... Well, I think real life's sometimes thought. scarier than what we see in the oh, movies, mm. isn't it? Oh, so, yeah. so things 100%. like that can play play well to that. Yeah, because it's very, very <coughs> believable as well. Like, mm. very, very believable that all of the things that... All the crimes that happen in the series mm. are genuine, mm. could be genuine stories. Like, I could imagine seeing these stories on the news. Mm. What, what about you? So last week, uh, Richard and I went to see... Um, at the quad it was the Satori screen screening um, they do every month they do a screen in there of uh, Asian cinema and this time it was a double bill it was all about Hong Kong category 3 cinema so that is t- turns out that until I think it was 1988 Hong Kong didn't have a rating system for their films oh, wow. so there was no age rating system in Hong Kong um, so children were going to go and see things that they probably really shouldn't be seeing. <laughs> it uh, kind of meant that they had to rein it back a little bit. It also though, meant because there was no guarantee kids wouldn't see it. So yeah. So filmmakers uh, okay. sort of had that sort of 
idea in the back of the head that children might see this let's yeah you know totally maybe, maybe we should very responsible of the filmmakers mm. yeah mm. and just to point out this is the quad in Derby the yes. quad in Derby yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, that was until Category 3 came along <laughs> yes <laughs> So what, what sort of happened was there was a couple of films that, that came out and the, there was a documentary that we saw first that was the first part of the double bill that explained everything that was a you know, really interesting documentary on why it came about and then some of like the, the most notorious examples I guess um, and there was like, two films that came out one of which was one called Men Behind the Sun which was like a very anti-Japanese film. Yeah, it was very political. Very political, and it was... It came out in China, and it passed totally uncut in China because everything was... The Japanese are horrible. Gosh. They are awful people. Yeah. Um, and that's fine. That's the propaganda that we're pushing. Mm. It doesn't matter. Hong Kong, uh, at the time being, you know, a British like colony owned by Britain, yeah. uh, sort of looked at it and went, ah, oh, this... This cannot be seen by children. Yeah, like there was things in that film that were horrendous. Like there was like, um, I think the the story was that they use actual animals for certain scenes where they really shouldn't Gosh. have done. Even though now yeah. the directors come out and said no, they were fine. You're like, mm. not so sure. I hate when they hear stuff like mm, that. They used an actual body in an autopsy scene yeah, because that it was, was pretty grim, cheaper. Um, but that's. That's like not uncommon. That's like in in like even mainstream cinema. Ooh. Like they they've used a lot of real skeletons in a lot of films. With like probably um, Texas autopsy. Chainsaw Massacre. That room and Poltergeist is as well. the the bone room that she goes in with the chicken cages yeah. and stuff. All of that is real human and real animal bones. I believe uh, somebody probably will correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's. I'm actually kind bones. of okay with somebody using my bones for that. Like, I think that'd be quite cool. I'd be 100 percent down being yeah. in an autopsy scene as well. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's just as long as like, like you don't see everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, just the lower half, yeah, just, just the good stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. just the good um, stuff. But yeah, give the then, people what they want. <laughs> the, hmm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we we saw the documentary about this, and then basically what happened was in 1988 the they decided that enough's enough, we need to put in categories. Mm. And therefore, Category 3 came out, anyone under the age of 18 cannot see these films. So, perfect. Children couldn't see the films, but it also had the knock-on effect that directors and filmmakers then went, oh, oh yeah. rub hands together. <laughs> we can do what we want. baby up to 11. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so they, they just basically went uh, mental and, and made yeah. these just crazy films that, bizarrely, were like big hits. They weren't like over here like video nasties they weren't yeah. underground stuff that you sort of sort out on VHS mm. they were mainstream stuff they made a lot of money um, and there was loads of them so like Ebola syndrome was one of them <laughs> which basically was the story was that the guy went to Africa I won't tell you how he got Ebola but he got Ebola comes back to Hong Kong and then basically goes around the streets coughing on people going Ebola for you oh, yeah. um, oh my god which yeah, is it was pretty weird it was pretty, pretty grim pretty grim um, and then just other just bizarre things um, I'm, the, the untold story which was uh, touching on the awards thing yeah kind of a a, a bit serial killery yeah. but very over the top violence gore mm. you know gore against children things like that um, but the guy uh Anthony Wong, he won the Hong Kong Film Award for Best Actor that year. You know, so it was a wow. it was a main yeah. it was a hit. You know, it, it was mm. acknowledged by the award givers. You know, the, yeah. the committee that this this is a damn good performance. You know, in, in a film of merit sort of thing. That's that's yeah. really interesting. So that's what that's that's what I've seen recently. I, I think we need to get the Killer Snakes on DVD and we Killer need to sit and watch that. Killer uh, Snakes. Where, I'm where at one though. point he basically just this allowed the snake snakes episode. to bite him. Like that was like Nicholas Cage actually, <laughs> actually being bitten. Is that you? <laughs> oh, and also just to throw it out there, I watched um, Free Solo documentary on uh, a climbing documentary of a guy who free climbs El Capitan. Ooh. I wanted so to watch yes. that. That won the I think best documentary award at the Oscars this year. Yes. Um, so again, a little link to what we're going to be talking about later yeah. on. But the scariest thing I've seen all year. Yeah, Be- just horrendous. So Long he free down. climbs. El you know those, those videos that you see on Facebook oh. and, and YouTube. You know where. But, the, I mean, the, the the reality is, is there's the videos where they don't go well as well. Oh, and awful, like awful. It, it's like you watch it, and I don't think you realise that like yeah. that's literally someone that's, that's just gone. That's done. Mm. Yeah, like 
I kind of see the appeal in it. Like, yeah, you've got brass balls, but... Yeah. Come it's on. not it's, worth it. It's so irresponsible. It's not worth it at all. Um, th- yeah. th- I mean, this guy, he's, he's trained for it. It's his Young, thing. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's different. different. You know, yeah. it's, I guess the risk is managed, but oh man, my palms yeah. were sweaty watching that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just expecting <laughs> you just to bust out into a map now, like... Knees weak. Oh, yeah, so he's never. <laughs> he's never got a sweater already. <laughs> Mom <Mom's> spaghetti. <laughs> sure. Oh, we're and still going. We should and probably um, stop there before yeah. we continue with the entire song. And then the copyright the the I know <laughs> none of the lyrics after that. So the, uh, the topic this week is. I keep saying week. We keep saying it week. monthly. The topic this time. That's just say this, this episode. Time. This, this episode. episode. The topic. This episode <laughs> is awards and horror films. The, the, the thing I'm going to throw out there is that horror films are overlooked at award ceremonies. I think we're probably going to concentrate on the Oscars for this one. Yeah. We're probably going to allude to other ones, but... Are they undervalued oh. at the awards? Yes. I, I do not think this podcast is long enough. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me just uh, check the memory card. We have got an hour and a half left on it, so yeah, we'll no, see. Yeah, no, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> um, um, oh, yeah, definitely. I'm just... I'll tell you, I've, I've got written down here. I'm going to just whittle off films that have won the best picture award as in horror films that have won um, since since the 1970s ok right? yeah um, how many horror films do you think have uh, uh, won the award or films that you could class as a horror uh, s- well, so as in best picture best picture I think Carrie did did quite well Silence of the Lambs won some Exorcist things, yeah. maybe Um I mean, I'm thinking get like out. classic. I don't Did know. Did Get Out win Best Picture though? Uh, no, it won Best Adapted. Best screenplay, was, screen was, wasn't it? It was an Oscar, but I don't know what. So and, from uh, the, Best so Original Screenplay. I'm going to say eight. Are you on your phone? Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Yes. Cheating. This is not on. You cannot go on your phone. This, this was a Cheat. question. Oh, this is I'm going to say since 1970, maybe eight. Eight oh. of one Best Picture. Oh no. No, I think no, no. I, I don't know. I think there might so be more. So this is than we thirty-nine think. years. I we're think, talking. I think maybe two or three, if that. Yeah. So um, we go middle of the road and say five. Nineteen seventy. I'm being optimistic. One of those. Nineteen seventy-four. Best picture was not The Exorcist, but it was nominated. Yes. Oh. Okay. Right. It did, did it win any? Academy it won awards, for then? best writing. So screenplay based on material from another medium and best sound. Yeah. So it won two awards. It was nominated for. This Six was more pre makeup though, wasn't it? Like Eight makeup more. was oh. a category from like American Werewolf in London, wasn't it? Which came later. Yeah. So I think it would have definitely picked up yeah. an award there. So nominated for ten, one two. Okay. Jaws. Hmm. Nominated for Best Score? It must have won Best Score, surely. Yep. Okay, cool. Director? Nope. Wasn't even nominated, I don't think. No. Well, wasn't to be it, fair, it was salty kind of about before that. Spielberg was Spielberg. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking, like, Spielberg, no, obviously we knew Spielberg <coughs> as we know him now. Like, I just automatically assumed that he would <laughs> he's, be he's nominated. Just have a nomination. Yeah. Um, just for being him. Then there's a big gap from 1976. Right Is there up until... nothing for Carrie nope. there? Nothing. Silence of the Lambs won something, though, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, Silence of the Lambs did. Uh, Misery in 1991. Oh, gosh, wow. Won. Friggin' love that film. Won award. Best, Best actress? actress? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, spot Probably. on. Because Kathy Bates was and then Anthony Hopkins phenomenal. did win. Anthony Hopkins, he yes. That Science of the Lambs did pretty well. Four? Does he still hold the? Um, there's some sort of record for the shortest amount of time spent on screen in a film and winning Best Actor. Mm. I think. Probably. Did I it, think was it only something like seven? Charlie Clark in the dark. Seven awards. How many did it win? For a bonus point? Four. Oh, I thought you were going to say five. Oh. It was five. Okay. Best picture? Yeah. Best, Best actor. actor? Best Score? actress? Best actress? Yeah. Score? Director? Oh. oh, yeah. So it won the big four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Best writing, so it's big five. But <coughs> it won those awards called a thriller. As a thriller. As a thriller. And I mean, I've, I've, this guy fucking skins people. Yeah. I have written What's at the top. Thrilling. More of a this? thriller. Question mark. Yeah. 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 Having seen that as well on the big screen at one of the flashback things semi recently at the cinema, um, you don't realise just how many shots there are of Anthony Hopkins' face just taking up the entire screen. Oh, oh God, it yeah. is horrendous. It's terrifying. awful. That's like, why you need that. It's horrible. It's You're like, shit, the bed. That's. Terrifying. But I, I always thought, like, that, I mean, that's just a performance and a half, isn't it? Because there's something so 
smoothly charming. It's just about him as a character. How, yeah, how and you almost calm want, he is. He's almost. There's something comforting about him. There's something good, but there's also something but, quite romantic about his character. I think. Oh yeah, it's 100 percent like he's a gentleman. He is. Yeah, he's seductive, and yeah. it's that's the yeah. It's always the fact that he's one step ahead as well. Mm. Yes, like he is the one who's very clearly in a prison. He's in control. Yeah, but he is in but control, control yeah. of that entire situation, and he he kind of like he manipulates people to his own will in the way he says things. And the way he gets them to think things, and you're like, that's no, that's horrible. I think and that's definitely going to be something that I rewatch. I hadn't watched, watched that though ages. until probably within the last year. Oh, wow! Yeah. Um, just because I, I didn't really <clears throat> realise what it was going to be. It was one of those films that, like, I, I knew my mum had on VHS, and she'd always be like, no. You're too young for this, and I can always remember seeing the cover with the moth mm-hmm. yeah. and the skull, and, yeah. and just looking at it. And all it th- that image. I mean, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Like artwork of those films at that time as well. Mm-hmm. It's like I think that's how you remember those films. Because I, 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 I think like, of when I think of Silence of the Lambs, I think of that moth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. As um, a, a film, there are some really smart moments in it as well. Someone was telling mm-hmm. me that um, you know the the famous line about like hey, his liver. Um, with, with a fine Chianti. With a fine Chianti. Yeah, and so, beans. some kind of beans. <laughs> Father beans. Father, Father beans. beans. Can I so, just stop you there for I a second? I think you might be about to say the same thing I'm about to say here. Is it... John is like, do not shit on my parade. <laughs> Last time, Charlie Clark put a call out for an impression of E.T. Oh, wow. oh no. This time, I would like... <laughs> Your best Anthony Hopkins. See, I'm, are, we, uh, are we just doing the noise? Or are we doing, we're doing the line? We're doing the line. So the, so li- the line, the line is, is <clears throat> I ate his liver with some fava, with some fava beans. beans and a nice Chianti. And a bottle of Chianti. Yeah, he's okay. good. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being too funny, John. I think you've just won. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like I said, I'm at automatic disadvantage as a woman. <laughs> like, uh, equal opportunities, Charlie. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> you, you're yeah. up next. <laughs> Go on, Charlie. <laughs> Your best Hopkins. So, best Hopkins. Excellent. This is like the golem off that I had with Theo in a pub all over again. <laughs> God, the pressure, I don't like this. Um, I ate his liver with some fava beans. Uh, uh, that's even worse because I can't even say fava beans. <laughs> fava no, beans. I'm just going to pass. Just... Fava beans. <laughs> there you go. I'll do that bit. You can, you can have that because I can't Lines. talk apparently. Lines. <laughs> <laughs> I ate his liver with some fava beans. I ate his liver, some fava beans, <laughs> and a fine Chianti. <laughs> Glorious. Oh, I mean, I've got a cold. So again, if off. there was a camera here, the <laughs> eyebrow actor yeah, that that Liam Banks just did. Garbage day. That was, that was, day. That was yeah. right. Garbage right day. Garbage day. <laughs> Richard. Okay. Um, I ate his liver <laughs> with some fava beans and a fine bottle of Chianti. Just sounds like he's got asthma. <laughs> anyway, no, that was actually my really, really good. John, <laughs> like, you, you did a half ass one. You oh, just I did. Need to, you need to yeah, check yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you got this. I just, I just don't understand what you did there. You got, you took it and made it your own, which was he, he became Anthony Hopkins. He playing, mm, he playing Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> half asleep. I mean, in, all, in all seriousness, I think it was quite good. It was pretty good. It was pretty. It was your own take. I'm just going to completely just ape Anthony Hopkins, so that's fine. <clears throat> Steady now. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a bottle of key and tea. That, that, yeah, that, that was, was pretty good. Fair that was, yeah. I don't know who you sounded like, but it, it wasn't yeah. Anthony Hopkins. No, it was... It was <laughs> but but, but no, the, the noise was yeah, pretty spot yeah. on. I used to wander spot. around going... Hello, Clarice. And it's not even a line just, in the film. Just to your mum. Go just, out of the bath. Yeah. Hello, Clarice. <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> 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 I, don't, I don't know what so, so okay. so well, it's Sorry. To, yeah, yeah. Richard. So going, going back to the whole thing about like how it is actually quite smart, somebody told me that there is kind of almost like a reference there in what he's saying. You cannot take the meds he's supposed to be on with fava beans or Keontae. You can't have it. So that is like a little nod to Clarice to basically go, I'm not taking my meds. And she doesn't pick oh, okay. up on it. Oh. 
Oh, I don't know how true that is. Somebody once told me that, and I, I, I could see that being it's a like, thing, though. Yeah, like I love stuff like that. So just, much. just going, uh, just a simple nod, going, you know, sort of saucer out here. Is she going to get this? I'm not taking my meds. Yeah, and she doesn't get it. <laughs> Uh, and like so that's good. really if that is true that is really cool yeah that's really mm. clever so moving on to uh, 2000 Bruce Willis flick oh, Sixth Sense Sixth Sense, Sixth Sense. was no. it that did that come out 2000 Two th- what was it the 2000 Oscars M. Night nominated for six one nine that's hilarious that it was nominated for six nominated for six and it didn't win anything nope surely that should have won best screenplay nope uh, what, what, what for, one? Do you know what one best screenplay uh, that year? I don't know. I have to, it's something we can look up. Yeah. Propaganda. Richard, use your phone again. Yeah, well, Jeez. I mean, <laughs> I'm really, really quite, you know, amazed that you're managing to maintain these facts and figures whilst looking at your iPad. Oh, well, he kind of is <laughs> like, Don't come with notes! Salty! <laughs> best screenplay in 2000. Ah. Uh, uh, American Beauty. Ah, oh, fair play. Oh, uh, I see, did that win Best Picture as well that year? Yeah, I think Best it original did. Original screenplay. I think it. Yeah, yeah. I know Sam Mendes won that year, didn't he? Because I, I put didn't pressure on myself. Did it win screenplay director that my and first Best feature Picture? Must also be an Oscar-winning feature. <laughs> 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 so watch this space, guys. Oh my. Next Sam Mendes. Oh my. Um, we we leap eleven years after that to Black Swan. Oh wow! Which not but again. Five. Did it's it like win? a psychological thriller. It's yeah. not a horror film. Did it film. only win one? Did win one. Costume. Best actress. Yeah, Ali Liam's Ball. got it. Oh, Ball. I would have thought costume to be honest. Not even nominated. Really? That's that's disgusting. That just really surprises Phil. me because I think that's very... The costume work yeah, this, is this is This is what I mean. It's like, you know when you think of, of horror movies, I think, you know, if you said to like the everyday Joe, like uh, a horror movie, they'd think of like some blonde bimbo, like you said previously, with some big tits... Uh, being chased by a guy with a knife, not knowing yeah. what to do, making dumb decisions, and ultimately getting like a throat. Are we slit. talking Sarah Michelle Gellar in Scream Two? No, 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 because <laughs> that that was subverting it. That was that was clever, wasn't it? Because she, mm. we, we know who she was elsewhere. But it's so much more than that. Like the performances are so much more intense than any other genre. I, I think that's it. I like think no people, disrespect to other genres. People have a it's a preconception not the same. of horror where they go. Yeah. It's literally it's blood and guts. Yeah. It's people screaming. Yeah. It's not. It's not filmmaking. It's just. And from like an acting point of view, like what you just said, Liam, like as somebody who's worked like in horror and different genres as an actor, I think in like drama and like realism and films like that, you have like an emotional grounding in certain yeah, life events that you've experienced things yeah. like most people have gone through a loss in their life or have had their heart broken so if that's in a script of a piece of drama you can you can relate back to that you can use that if that's like the kind of way that you work as an actor but mm. as a horror actor you've got to use a heck of a lot of imagination especially as sometimes the stuff that you're acting to as a horror actor isn't even there mm. Like, it's not until afterwards, or you, you've got to imagine... What if you think about... The, the scares that are there, or the scare that's about to happen, or... The things that win, like, Best Picture, obviously, we've, we've, we've clearly seen the massive gaps there. They're usually, like, biopics, or um, true-life dramas, or things like that, where people go on an emotional journey. Mm. Yeah. And if you think about that, there's a lot of things as an actor... I'm not saying it's any easier, because, obviously, these people, they're in that, that coliseum competing with each other, because they're the best of the best. Mm. But... They can draw from things. Say that they are doing, like, a, a thing about, I don't know, cancer or... Um, the, for example, obviously, Julianne Moore, she won with the Alzheimer's story that she, she yes. told, didn't she? That that's something that she could have quite easily, obviously, gone... To, she could have gone to, like, a, a care facility and, and spoken with people who are suffering from it. She could have spoken to people who've had family who've suffered from it. There's a way to, as you said, emotionally ground it and draw from it. On mm. Someone being haunted by a demonic presence or, yeah, someone with a chainsaw chasing them or whatever. These things happen, obviously not in that heightened, realistic state uh, as they do in the movies. They happen in real life. Obviously, you hear about these crazy things happening. But there's no way that an actor could realistically draw off something. They've got to, they've got to fabricate that. And to me, that's acting. Yeah, and I think, like, certainly for me as an actor, like, some of my most challenging roles have been horror simply mm. for that reason is mm. you've got to use your imagination while trying to also like create a believable character 
Well, I mean, if you don't mind me segueing still on the awards thing, you've obviously just recently won well, Best Actress. Well, I'd love to say. <laughs> um, at the Bloody Flicks uh, Awards. So shout out to Bloody Flicks. Thank you so much. We, yeah, thanks. We did, we did rather well. We picked up with, Best Picture as well. Um, I don't know if I'm, if I'm taking over, if you were going to kind of go into this at some point. <laughs> but um, obviously we won Best Film and Best Actress for you. For Best um, Friends Forever. For Best it? Friends yeah. Forever. Um, now this, that was a film that it, it's only just started the festival circuit for us, um, but it has been to a few other award shows, and the things that we were getting nominated for were more things like makeup and sound, sound yeah. which are things that we've seen obviously on the previous like Oscar wins of kind of where horror's had its strength. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting you should say that because I've got a, a little list down here as well that little, I can show you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> little it's got, list, it's little list. The list. But I mean, I think that's. Um, I think with horror and things like that, yeah, makeup and sound are going to be major players in that. But performance is, to me, completely underrated and never really recognised. Yeah, I have a big problem with that. Like, it mm. does get me quite vexed. I think, honest, like, one but... of my—I mean, we'll probably pick up on this, but like a massive, massive thing for me was Hereditary. Mm. Um, have you seen that yet? Nope. No. I mean, no. I still haven't seen it. No. And obviously, no. Tony Collette got a massive, massive, in my opinion, yeah, a massive snub. Like I her performance in that is dreadful. just like, a, like it's something to aspire to as like a horror mm. actor, and it shit on a lot of other um, horror actors' performances. I certainly think, and mm. she, she was definitely snubbed, and that that really annoyed me. But like, she really she, got me annoyed. She did win an award at the Fangoria Awards, so she won mm. Best Actress there. But obviously, that's an award show similarly to our situation. Obviously, I'm not comparing the two. Yeah. But we won a horror award at a horror at a festival. Horror festival. Whereas obviously at other festivals, we've not necessarily had the same recognition or the same response. Let's say. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do you think? I mean, because obviously the the year before, so two, 2018, mm. Get Out was yeah. nominated, and and Daniel Kaluuya he was nominated for Best Actor. Yeah, mm-hmm. plus obviously right. Shape of Water. Shape well. of Water. Shape of Water. But that, you could, that you could was call that a fantasy, fantasy film, yeah. wasn't it? There's, there's some horror there. It's a monster movie. Yeah. You said that, and I'm so proud well, it's the, that it's you said Creature that. from the Black Lagoon. Interesting. Guillermo del Toro style with more romance in it. it didn't win any of the acting awards it was up for. It, what shape of water? No. Did it not? I thought. No. I thought it was, she won best actress mm. for that. No. Nominated. Nominated for. Who won that yet? Best actress. I'm not sure on that one. 2018. I'm trying to think who won best actress. But yeah, but it's, it's interesting because you can sort of think: Did Hereditary not get nominated because you know the the Oscars is very political? It's very who pushes it here, who pushes yeah. it there. Did I they just not push it? Or? It came out at a time that was maybe a little early. But having said that, Get Out didn't come out anywhere near the awards season. And I can remember when that was released, everyone was like, this needs an Oscar. But that, but I think that did well. Because it obviously had of the political and like, yeah. race yeah. issues it was pushing. Yeah. Whereas Hereditary didn't really have that kind of agenda. But I, to me, I'd ne- I've never seen performances like that in a film. Like, it truly blew me away. Like, to the point where there's a character in there that pretty much has a panic attack and a bit of a breakdown. And I, you were there I with him, pretty much you? felt like I was about to have a panic attack in the cinema. And, like, that's no exaggeration. Like, that's never happened. But I, I felt friggin' awful. And then I was like, this film is doing this to me. But yeah. it's because of these people on screen. And there wasn't a weak link anywhere yeah. at all. And that's a huge credit to Ari Aster, the director and... And obviously everyone involved. Um, but yeah, Tony Collette just completely blew it out of the park. Like, See, the thing incredible. is... Incredible. It's like I'm just looking at Hereditary, like, on Amazon, for example. Yeah. Um, and it's it came out on DVD uh, last year. Mm. Looking at this, October the 8th last year. So yeah. it's, only, it's been out six months. Um, and the DVD's seven quid. Mm. Right? You kind of look at all the films that came out around that time they're still full price it's like it's as if it's just been oh it's a horror film we'll oh, knock yeah. that down yeah. you yeah. know we'll sell it cheap but that what, what's funny about that though is if you go into supermarkets or like places that um, sell like DVDs 
the horror is always like the section that they'll always have like new titles in every week yeah. because they are easy to pump out like I accept that horror is a genre that is very easy to do in many ways like I mean we do a lot of the stuff we do on like zero budget and just pulling in a lot of favours um, because you can get away with just throwing blood at a wall but then why can't that be movie. acknowledged but like wait, if it's good think, if it's good horror I think it's because you have well one made. end of the schedule to the other Mm. Because you do have the likes of Hereditary or The Exorcist or Silence of the Lambs, and and I, I do think they deserve to be in the same category. That have got that huge production value, and they they'll have Oscar winning people behind them. Um, because I mean, I'm sure Tony Collette she got an Oscar nod with Sixth Sense, didn't she? Tony I'm, Collette, I'm, I will Google. I'm positive she is an Academy Award nominee in some regard from something. She might not have done. I, I might be completely wrong, but. Um, the difference is is obviously they have that magnificent production value yeah. and push behind them like A24 is a, a, a studio that I think is absolutely glorious I think what what kind of shocks me is the fact that I don't think they've kind of done anything Oscar worthy whereas the likes of Blumhouse who are known for making cheap horror movies yeah. and only spending a certain amount because the focus really is on the return they're the ones who've then gone and won an Oscar in a sense with Get Out yeah. Because no hate against Get Out. I love the way that it makes you feel, particularly me as a as a white man, made me feel. But I didn't think it was that great. I didn't think it was. I don't know, groundbreaking. Yeah, it it, it was. But, I think it sort of it tapped into that sort of Trump as president sort of yeah. that it, it very much tapped into that kind of feeling at that time didn't it but horror does that and then horror does that anyway for much me much though Get Out was like it was all with the like the suggestives and like the symbolism mm. and the like think, little yeah, like, like that is what made that film brilliant yeah. I really enjoyed it and I remember going into it thinking just based on the way everything had been publicised and, you know, watching the trailer and stuff, thinking that it was going to be very specifically about race. Mm. And it was a lot less about race than I thought it was going to be. Mm. And I particularly enjoyed that film. Mm. Yeah. Because I think... I I like it when I go into a film with a particular sort of preconception, it's going to be this way, and then it's not. It's something completely different. It completely sort of knocks you off your feet with your idea of oh so it's not about this anymore and there was there was something about that and the the way we kind of discussed um in the the last episode about like freddy krueger and like the the idea of when you're asleep you're at your most vulnerable just Mm. the idea that that there's the moment where he's kind of sat in the chair yeah. and he, he can't do anything. Yeah. And that, for me, that moment where he is incredibly vulnerable yeah. was horrible to watch. Like, mm. But I think that's why it was commented on, because obviously I, I can't possibly imagine how it must be to, to grow up a different... or exist in society being a different race at all. Because I think you naturally do have a privilege being white. Absolutely, yeah. and that and that's what's refreshing about those sorts of films, and what I do applaud it for is because obviously, us, his next film, Jordan Peele's next film coming out, that's refreshing because that's a black family going through horror, and I can't recall ever seeing that, and it baffles me that we d- haven't seen that. Like it is so much like. Do you know what I mean? Any black characters? I mean, it's a joke. It, isn't it is it? interesting. In the how they, yeah, the black, black guy dies first, die first. In, in the horror films. When you yeah. when you look at iconic horror characters, mm. um, it's like off the top of my head, I've got Candyman. He's a villain. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you think of like the, all the scream mm. queens, as it were. That I mean, you've got all... Jada Jada Pinkett. I mean, yeah. I, I guess Scream Two kind of made a comment on it in their opening. But there's like, is they oh. have to make a comment on it? It's like. Mm. If it's obviously a thing if they're making a comment but on it, it with that it's yeah but it, it's almost like because they watched horror they're being punished for it yeah do you know what I mean it's, mm. it, and um, I, I do think it is a, it's a terrible kind of stereotype and, and uh, archetype of the genre that that's kind of a thing that we expect and I'm so glad to see that it's being refreshed but yeah there, there shouldn't be any kind of issue with um I think like villains being a certain from a certain background and mm. and and the survivors being from a certain background. Yeah. I don't think there should 
it, it just it does baffle me. And I mean, even in terms of obviously what what we do, I don't think any of the projects we cast are cast in a way that we it's really thought about in that way. No. Um, but it, it's nice to see that things are being a lot more inclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's it's a tricky one. But yeah, I, I, to go back to the point, I find it kind of weird that Blumhouse is the one that's kind of taken horror over the finish line recently. Yeah, I when just... they're renowned for not doing the best job. Like, I mean, for example, they made Happy Death Day, which is <laughs> is yeah, it's it's great that we've got a new kind of slasher out there um, for like the Twitter generation, but but it's. God awful. It's, it's, really it's, it's reduced I, I to, I want to, to like stereotypes. It's very yeah, much a yeah, Blumhouse. It, it seems to be very much, and there's nothing against it whatsoever because mm. they're, they're doing an awesome job. They're getting horror out there. Yeah, but sure. it's very much make it cheap, make money. You know, yeah. and then it's like yeah, that, it, we're going to tap into this because that's what's hot at the moment. Yeah, so, I think like, it is a bit they cash use maybe some mm. of the the like the refinement. In their films that way, I don't they? Because it's very much like, act. yeah, approaching it's like a project like that. Make film like you were saying, make it cheap, get a big return. Yeah, but it's like cheap action movies that you see where they can pay like a big star to be in it for five minutes, and then they'll be all over yeah. the poster. Yeah, there's every poster looks the same. There's like guns and explosions that's, and profiles. That's the thing, stuff, isn't it? Well, yeah, um, they used to say that about Steven Seagal's films. Mm. Like, they'd get Steven Seagal in, he'd come in, he'd mumble through his lines, they'd stick yeah. him on the cover, they'd put a helicopter on there and an explosion, bam, yeah. seven pounds, it'd make its money back. Absolutely, But the yeah. thing is, it was like... But it's the same with... with Wes Craven did that with, like, degree. Scream, didn't he? Like, if you look at the, mm. the the poster and the artwork for Scream, it's Drew Barrymore's face. Mm. Yeah. But and she dies, that was spoiler, done. in the first five minutes, but he did that, that very cleverly like and, like, kind of deliberately. Yeah, like that, I think. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But like, we know that now, but at the time, the audiences that went into it had no idea yeah. that she was going to get killed yeah. off because she was on the poster. She was the main Yeah, she's star. the star, isn't she? She's the big and star And she dies time. in the opening. But it's interesting, they say, with horror, when you go to um, a supermarket, for example, and you look at the shelves, mm. and the amount of horror films that are in there are around like mm. like 30 to 40 in the in the chart yeah and they're all about 5 pounds 7 pounds each and they've all got a cover carbon that copy looks yeah. pretty much the same it's white background screaming woman black and white yeah. red text yeah. the yeah. thing is as well it doesn't take long either for it to go Brown's from that whatever. point to all of a sudden it's in 3 for 10 pounds and then right. it's mm. yeah and then it's and they're all really low budget films that have I mean, been picked up and then sort of sold on the basis of if we slap this on it yeah. mm. that'll make money and I don't think any other mm. genre is like given that like, I guess lack of respect I think it's, there's literally no middle ground I think you either have obviously at a point where it's undeniable that it has to be like award winning because yeah. it, of the things it's commenting on because like you said the horror is one of those genres that truly speaks about the time that it's made Hmm. And I think it's probably the most accurate. Well, in it, terms go, it of that, goes it's in very trends, much social isn't it? Like, after like the AIDS epidemic happened, like there was a lot of zombie films to be made, and well, yeah, and like the vampire thing, movies, and yeah, and, and like body horror, and then like yeah. after nine eleven, there was there was a lot more. It went to like paranormal kind of films. They found started to come out and stuff, things yeah. like that. Found footage kind of movies. They had a big boom after like that happened, and it. It's mm. interesting because it does have a kind of social commentary, but then it's not given the same respect as if you made like a no. a drama about something like that is it and it, it seems and to be kind of like very this strange. club doesn't yeah. it that is very much a select few that get to exactly. win the awards mm. and make the projects well, so you, you made uh, you had an interesting point earlier on when you were saying that horror films they generally when they do get nominated for awards it's for the technical awards it's for mm. it's mm. for makeup mm. so it, looking at this like um, Frankenstein won what you got nominated for makeup? Nothing else. It's Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, yeah. nineteen ninety-five. Uh, the Kenneth Branagh. That's Kenneth Branagh. Yeah. 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 Kenneth, uh, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, Helena yeah. Bonham Carter. Yeah. Like it's not heavyweights. It's not a great film, but you'd think. To be fair, I've not seen it, but <laughs> I remember watching it for my GCSE. I, that's where I last watched it. <laughs> for GCSE. <laughs> Literally the whole of Britain is like yeah. me too. Woo, <laughs> I also watched that Romeo and Juliet where she got a bap out. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is, is that the one where they got around the whole using guns as swords by writing no. sword, sword on, them? on the gun, no, that and was, was like a, a 1970s oh, one okay. where yeah like literally all the boys were like oh my gosh Jimmy Carr yeah but um yeah like Sleepy Hollow 
Oh my Best god, I love Sleeping Gorgeous Hollow. Film. Gorgeous, gorgeous right? film. Um, the Fly. Again, makeup. but like, if you think about some of the actors that are it, it's Willem Dafoe, it's Johnny Depp, it's. Yeah. Um, I, I can. Uh, s- names have all gone out of my head, but. I can sort of see the Sleeping Hollow. Yeah, there's yeah, massive Michael actors. Gamble yeah, everyone. Michael Gambon's yeah. in it. That's the thing, I can sort of see with a lot of horror films where you're thinking they've not got the star power so maybe they've not got the Oscar bandwagon they're not the, mm. the, the studio isn't going let's try and push this yeah but with those sorts of films what, you, you, why weren't they sort of pushed was it because there were studios who were a bit like oh it's a horror film we don't want to be oh. associated with that yeah. or I, I think it's because the, it comes with the connotation that it's cheap yeah and it's not art yeah. which t- to me obviously makes me quite mad because I love horror but... it's cool that you said um, that they they pretty much put makeup in because of American I think that well they had to recognise that didn't they I mean ridiculous like it, I, I, even today it's ri- ridiculous yeah, that it's, scene I think it's shocking because obviously if you think about like the great universal monsters hmm. like they stand up still today and I mean they were pioneering techniques back then with yeah. like latex and everything and I mean Creature from the Black Lagoon that suit was underwater like I, I couldn't make and that now and we have access to so many original resources. concept designed by um, a woman yeah, I found out recently absolutely, absolutely. The Creature from the Black Lagoon yeah. mm-hmm. that, but she was She's never credited, credited by, because yeah. she was a woman bloody hell that sucks well that's like uh, Mary Shelley isn't it when she wrote, when she wrote Frankenstein yeah. she wrote it under a pseudonym yeah. originally mm-hmm. didn't she yeah but it's interesting as you say that it's it seems to be that it's fine to have them nominated and seen mm. from a technical standpoint to a certain extent. Not necessarily yeah. cinematography or anything like that, but costume. But yeah, but, but makeup. Why, but why not? Because you you must. I mean, I'd love you to comment on this because as a, a DOP, a, a projects comparing what you've worked on and you, Rich, as well in terms of lighting and stuff. Surely it must be quite interesting for you oh, to get to play with that as opposed to it being a brightly lit room because everyone's happy well that's the thing you have more room to play it's so much more fun but I I think I wonder if they don't get nominated because they are sort of they're expected to look a certain way in the sense Mm. that oh it's 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 got to look like this or Mm. they've sort of it's a horror film yeah it's going to be dark it's going to be shadowy it's going to be this it's going to be that that's fine Mm. It, you know, it, but it's like, oh, actually, no. We, we've set this up. We, we, we've, we've the camera's there. It's doing this because yeah. we, we don't want to give that away. We need to pan at the exact moment to do this. Yeah. I think there's quite a lot of skill that goes into it. But okay. I think it's just sort of, again, it's because it's a horror film. It's like, yeah, but technically, there's a lot that's got to work. Yeah. And yeah. It, it kind of it gets thrown into this, like you said, this cliche of it being it needs to be dark and shadowy so that you can hide things. But then. You throw in like the daytime scenes and stuff from like mm. the the second paranormal activity, well, things where like all of a sudden you it. thought you were safe and then you're not. Mm. Mm. So it, mm. yeah, I mean, I think that's something for us. The next next film has to be a horror in the daytime, so doesn't it? Just to yeah, I think it can be done. You, you have to be smart about the yeah. way you do it, but yeah. it, it can be done. Well, that's it. I'm it's, sure. Talking about cinematography though, and um, like. It, it, Back to it follows. We talk, talked about it follows last last episode. Mm-hmm. Mm. That has some really interesting choices, oh, yeah. cinematography the, wise. The yeah. panning of the camera, just that. Yeah, things like that, and I think that. But it's so simple. Has uh, and maybe that's the maybe that's the problem. Maybe mm. that's the that's the issue that it's not big and flashy or horrors are supposed to look like that. It doesn't matter. Mm. Or maybe it is just because they look at it and go, it's a horror film we're just not that bothered you know I, I don't know it, I think with the the cinematography thing something that I saw recently like that was just insane in terms of like the way the camera worked was when the Suspiria mm. remake the, the new is, one yeah. yeah the new like the camera working that like, I, I mean I'm not technically camera, camera and and sound. minded no, but like I was incredible. watching some of it just going how the bloody hell have they actually yeah. made that work yeah and like I guarantee that that will get mm, bugger well, all didn't. in terms of, well it didn't get no, bugger yeah. all in terms of nominations for anything no I think Roma won didn't it for best yeah. cinematography but yeah. Alfonso yeah. Cuaron I mean I'm, I'm not mad at that because obviously oh ridiculous he's an incredible dude like yeah. I love I love things that he's he's done and I mean he to me I think he's kind of like a modern Kubrick in the way that he's 
he directs but from such a technical standpoint and he obviously shoots yeah. it he's involved in everything um, so yeah I mean I'm, I'm I, I wasn't mad about that I still have yet to obviously check out Roma in, in all honesty um, but uh, I, I think yeah the technical side of things it's good that that's recognised but I think you almost have to particularly from when we've learned filmmaking when we were at uni together you almost have to kind of undo some of the 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 learning you've done and the walls and I think we find a lot of magic when we're on set together particularly obviously when you're trying things with, with makeup and obviously have to like that and um, when you are wanting to obstruct information and reveal information yeah. and when and, and sound and stuff obviously for us it maybe more comes in in post as opposed to kind of on set but that to me is when I'm editing and, and things that's where I have the most fun is with the sound and yeah because there's so many things that you can do that you don't see um, but yeah I, I just think horror is at its finest um, it is just great storytelling and we've told horror stories since like we were cavemen because you're always yeah, when, when you ghost stories around the campfire exactly. and all that oh, kind of because you're always scared of what's, what's in the like, dark yeah. family parties that we used to have like at, um, at my grandma's house we as like kids would always take torches with us or we'd find mm. torches in my grandma's garage and we'd lock ourselves in the dark garage and all sit there with our torches and everybody mm. would like have a, a competition of mm. like who had the scariest story and like that was from about the age of six and do you think we did stuff sorry, like that do, do you think that's something then that it, it's maybe maybe when it comes to awards that horror is seen as a little bit childish it's not it's not it's not serious you know it, it's mm. it's not a drama it's not a a big budget like blockbuster like, fantasy is, you know, it's. I think it's you have, something you that you can just have a bit of fun with. To have to, to you know, award, I think don't you? Yeah. The horror, and it like you that. said, the horrors that unfortunately that have won haven't won as horrors, and they've been more like, especially recently with like Get Out, they've been more like social realism horrors, mm. and I think that that mm. that's the big letdown for me with obviously horror not yeah. winning at award shows is it it's it has to play like the political game or I, be more of a thriller or a fantasy to actually get recognised I could see as well like the idea of you know people seeing it as being childish with you know like the the stories where rather than making any kind of commentary it is designed just to scare you I could see but there's a heck that, of a skill in that yeah well the, A there's a skill in that and, and B okay fair enough you might view it as childish but every single person out there still has that in their past it's still up there like you were saying mm. in the last episode that like even now the bit with E.T. bursting mm. out of the bushes scares the shit out of you it is it's my still to make like, sure that E.T. is mentioned every episode yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's still ingrained up here Absolutely. it's still locked in up here yeah. and I think that's why so many people even if that is the case do still love the classic horror with the jump scares and the the monster that's scaring the shit out of you. No one will ever go through life not experiencing fear. Ever. Yeah. Like, you don't have to see a horror movie to experience fear because naturally, when you grow up and you learn things about yourself and the world, you, you will be slightly afraid of something. And it just bothers me that the films that win don't allow you to feel too much. There's not a broad spectrum. You have to feel, like, empathy or be upset or... I don't know see a, a character's yeah. journey you've either got to cry or that? be elated yeah. why can't yeah. you do that yeah. without a <laughs> demon <laughs> coming in <laughs> or without um, I, I don't know without something just a bit more exciting happening yeah because to me you, you can't beat being scared that's like the, no. the best feeling for me I absolutely love it did, um, did Paranormal Activity win anything no, oh, God. No. 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 Because that, for no, me... No, that was seen that as a film, very cheap, like, It, it was very film, cheap, but, you know, that scared the living shit out of me. It was yeah. horrible. I, I think the thing is, from a from a technical standpoint, it was never going to win anything. No. Because... It, There's not it, much to it. It was groundbreaking, but not it's, in the right yeah. way. Yeah. Well, what should the Oscars and the, the awards like ceremonies in general, what should they be awarding? Is it the films that change things you know is it the films that push boundaries and like do something groundbreaking because if it is then maybe it should have been looked at in that sort of sense of mm. you know what actually that's really sparked something or Blair Witch you know that that mm. really sparked a whole change in cinema from it went from being mm. uh, 
everything had to be perfect and everything had to be shot like this to, you know what, no, we can make a film yeah. with yeah. camcorders yeah. and make it compelling. We can do this, we can do that. I so mean, so what, why aren't those films looked at may, in the same sort of way? Maybe I'm simplifying it too much, but the idea of, like, best film and stuff like that, for me, like, it shouldn't need to say anything. It shouldn't necessarily need to spark an emotion. It should be simply down to, is it a good film? Like, yeah. you know, like, maybe I'm simplifying it, that far too much. Yeah, like, did, like, feel, well, yeah, potentially, but, mm. like... I, I think that there's nothing wrong with a film simply for entertainment's sake. If you come out of a film going, yes, that was a good film, mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think yeah. sometimes it's great to have a political message mm. or a feeling that it makes you feel or even just that you love the characters. I, but I think sometimes a film just for the sake of... Yeah, that was a good way to spend an hour and a half. But that that would never be a film that, that you... I think think about for an award. Well, this is the like thing. Um, a mindless blockbuster or, or whatever they, is going to not be. Uh, was the Oscars that were they going to put in an audience choice or something? Yeah. Wasn't it? And then they got roundly sort of no, 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 you can't do that. that it's that like stops. I felt like they were making bold choices last year, obviously with the nominations and the people that won, yeah. and like to see uh, Del Toro win director and and best film, the Chip mm-hmm. Water yeah. won best film, so. That, to me, was a massive step forward. And then for them to say this popular category, I, I was kind of on the fence about it, because part of me was thinking, horror might get a shout in here. Yeah. Because that might be the Academy's way of being like, OK, we see you, we have to recognise what you're doing. So this is where we're going to slot you in, so then we can get on with all the other stuff mm. we're used to doing. I think what what really bothers me and kind of upsets me, in all honesty, is the fact that as a filmmaker, I feel that I'm going to have to change what I believe in and what I like to do and what I want to create in order to be recognised. Yeah, I, like, I know for a fact I'm never going to be in BAFTA or um, do any of that stuff, which I can see friends around me doing, uh, because of the films I make. And I don't think it's... I, you shouldn't have to change for stuff like that. I think... As I say, oversimplification, there should just be recognition for mm. a film being great mm. for whatever reason. Mm. And I think as well, like, we've, we've, we've kind of said it before, but, like, the fact that I know when we make films, we make them on, like, next to nothing budget... But yeah, like, we, we don't make them to, to win awards. I think that's no, just a then, really happy but then if you if you look at, like... I think horror's so underrated, yes, because it can be done cheap, but people don't actually understand the effort and the craft that goes into using such a tiny, tiny budget, which a lot of horror filmmakers have, Don't and crafting something so Incredible. great on it. I mean, yeah. I'm going to, like, like name drop or award ceremony drop or whatever, but when we we won the My Annabelle Creation competition for the UK entry, mm. like, that was made in my grandma's hallway... And a shed. And, and a my, shed. And my shed. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's bloody shed. A yeah. shed and my grandma's Twice. hallway. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Twice. But yeah, like, and that was on family favours, a bunch mm. of mates getting together and... And just, ma- and just making something cool. And making something cool. And that film that went, I think that I don't think film. it looks that bad at all. I, I watched, no, I don't think it um, looks like I, I've shown a shed. It to, I've shown it to people and they've gone, oh, that's dead good. And I'm like, do you know where we filmed that? And they're like, not close. I was like, that's my shit. Yeah, and every obviously. single one of them has gone, what? You can see that it's cardboard <laughs> around the edge of the uh, thing. I meant to kind of I blow the curtain uh, across uh, just to cover the edge because you can just see like the corrugated bed. But the thing is... So, I, trivia, there's cardboard in the confession. <laughs> I, 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 that wasn't. We we ran something along the edge. Ran beading. Uh, yeah, like it. a beading around the edge. Oh, okay, I hate the beading then. So, yeah, <laughs> I, remember, like, I remember doing you, that. Your workmanship is yeah, terrible. I, I was I watching um, Peaky Blinders the other day, and there was a mm. scene there in a confessional booth, and I was like, "We did that, mate. We, we did that in a shed." You know, yeah. and, it, and it looked very similar. I was mm. like, oh, "I'm pretty pleased with that." Yeah. But again, it's, it's the way that you light it. It's the way that you approach it. Performance again, like really, obviously grounded it from everyone. I think, I think that's it. I think the, the issue with any sort of award ceremony, like the Oscars or the Baftas or anything yeah. like that, it, it's awarded by a committee yeah and it's it's subjective and it's mm. political and for example with with Roma for example I, I'm yeah. pleased it won yeah um, but 
it was pushed so much by Netflix mm. as like we need to get this film to be seen as legitimate yeah let's push it let's have billboards everywhere let's have Oscar campaigns it's, it's they spent so much money yeah. on getting that into their mindset that they probably went oh sh- we should probably give this an award and it totally deserved the awards it got but it just makes you think maybe with a horror film if maybe if Hereditary got that same sort of push mm. Would it have yeah. then been nominated for certain things? Quite, quite yeah. possibly. It's just, is it not? Is it maybe not a problem with the the award ceremonies themselves, but more with the studios, the studios not pushing the films to well, their I, full I potential? Think, I think A twenty four do an amazing job, and they've done some incredible things. That like obviously that and the witch, mm. and um, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. And it's like every time I see that logo appear before a film, I kind of deep down know that I'm going to enjoy it which quite frankly I don't think I have with any other studio that they reliably make good content I think but the I just don't think that they they'd have a leg to stand on they couldn't compete with the likes of Universal that, that's or, the thing um, it's money isn't it Fox any of it because you hear about the stories don't you of like people who are judging these things in the committee being sent all these care packages from like Team Roma yeah. or, or things yeah. like that so it's like if you think about it, the the film itself is low budget, so there's They're no not. budget for a but bloody then, Oscar campaign. If you look at like obviously Universal back in the day has brought us like and and I suppose like Modern has brought like the big studios have brought some good horror films, but are they as technically wonderful as some of the maybe lower budget horror films that we like? Like you said, the A twenty four stuff. Like I, I think sometimes it, there's a semblance of playing it safe. Mm-hmm. with the bigger budget stuff but these studios they would not be where they are now without horror like well, Universal, Universal wouldn't exist without Universal Monsters built on a foundation of yeah. horror and that says something if you think about it like when we were talking about obviously people were experiencing fear when people were making movies and the first movies that were coming out they were like horror movies were ghost, well, stories. Like ghost stories and psycho. horror movies and the the famous clip of the train pulling into the station that oh, was it terrified terrified people, people. Yeah. and I mean because it was a reaction that was like yeah that it? was the first kind of experiences people were having with film and it's like it's just been shoved in a cupboard locked away and it's kind of like we don't want to acknowledge you now even though I think the the leaps that are being made with film and entertainment and the, the medium uh, are with that and sci-fi and, and potentially fantasy I think genre like genre pieces like that yeah. is where where the progress is being made Thanks for listening to the second episode of No Ghouls Allowed. Um, Next time we are going to be discussing uh, Jordan Peele's new film, Us, and quite possibly Pet Cemetery as well, if we've got a chance to go and watch that one. And we're also going to be discussing the best deaths in cinema. So that could be from horror, it could be from anything. So keep it creepy and see you on the other side. Okay, welcome to the second episode of the... <laughs> Sorry, oh. no, start again. It wasn't even <laughs> Liam. It wasn't even Liam. Well, the thing is, I, I heard him go, and it, like that just set me off, so... Oh. And I was purposefully not looking at him, so I thought I'd look at Richard. You're a joke, Richard, you're a joke, mate. <laughs> right, it's fine. Don't Nobody look at anybody else. <sighs> Sorry, Liam. Just let it out. You just gotta get it done. You gotta get it done. <laughs> you are my first your t-shirt. I'm, I'm, I'm so mad. Because if you don't, if you, don't so mad. you don't let it out, it will just continue to happen every time you try and go for it. <laughs> you can't say okay. <laughs> Yeah, you just have to get. You just have to go for it. When no, we're it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's not even funny. I don't even get what we're laughing about. <laughs>
Oh, I've not slept in three okay. days. <laughs> We've done so well to get like this far without this happening. It's been an hour, so you know, you know that time that we said part two. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Okay, cool. sorry. <laughs>